I want to get to um, something I um, picked up at the uh, meeting with Thomasina, and I think it's a good thing to discuss. Thomasina, we brought we brought up at the um, <coughs> at your well, your group is that um, the buses. Basically, the buses is just a bus driver, and that's it. I feel, and I want to bring this up to everybody here, a very important step, not just, not just here in Long Beach, but all over the country, is that every bus should have someone to work as a disciplinarian, whether it's from the school or whatever. Because to me, asking the bus driver to, you know, maintain discipline isn't the right way to go. Because to me, that woman or man is there for one reason, to get the children to school safely. So I feel it's of the most importance for buses to have someone on that bus. Because from what you said, Thomasina, horrible, horrible things go on in the buses unscathed and the kids throughout the country should not have carte blanche to bully kids on the bus and if there was someone from the school you know hire senior citizen whatever but put somebody on the bus in addition to the bus driver to help prevent the bullying on the bus um, anyone else want to Thomas I want to bring it to you because you brought it up and let, let's continue this discussion uh, about doing something on the bus besides just the bus, the bus driver, who I feel it's their obligation to get the kids there safely, not to discipline the kids. Your thoughts? Okay. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> um, the reason why I felt that way is my daughter had a situation when she was in what grade? Third grade? Fourth grade. Fourth grade? She was in fourth grade. And there was a student on the bus that told her that she was going to die. And told her that she had, he had a gun, gun in his backpack. Um, you know, to me, that, that's something that should, should have been taken seriously, whether the kid was playing or not. That, you know, it doesn't matter. You, know, you threaten somebody's life, that's, that's something that is not acceptable. Um, the school... The way they handled it, I don't feel it was appropriate because the school didn't feel that it was a, a um, legitimate threat because the child that threatened her had problems at home and he was a problem child. Um, so, it, you know, here you have a child that's scared to go back on the bus because, you know, nothing's being done about the situation. And then you have a child that is not being disciplined for his actions on the bus, which creates more of a problem because now who's right and who's wrong. Um, so I feel like if there is more people on the buses to monitor the children and, and see what's going on, then there is more safety. You know, um, I know when I drive with my kids in my car, <laughs> they're fighting, they're, they're arguing back and forth. I constantly have to like scream and yell and like, it's, it's distracting, you know, and, and to be a bus driver and have 20 to 30 kids on the bus at the same time that doing the same thing that my kids would be doing, but sometimes even worse because they're not your kids um, you know it, it's it's hard to control um, you know there's been a, I've heard a lot of stories about instances on the buses with kids being bullied and and you know nobody sees it so nobody does anything about it and the kid goes home and tells their parents and there's no witnesses because none of the kids on the bus want to stand up either because they have to ride the bus every day with nobody paying attention so you know that's something that needs to be addressed with the schools and I think cameras being on the buses would be a good idea and maybe monitors and safety monitors even maybe a retired police officer or somebody that knows how to handle these situations that might be a good way to like bring it and get help on the buses anybody else want to add oh sure i do agree with the fact that like, there should be more grown-ups on a bus because i feel like that's one of the main places where a lot of fights break out and there's not much a bus driver can do because they're in the middle of driving. They need to focus on the road, other drivers, and kind of just getting the kids to where they need to go safely and not have to worry about turning back and maybe accidentally getting into a car accident, which will make a situation way worse. Um, 
I feel like kids just need to kind of grow up no matter what age you are and realize that like you're on a bus, there's one person and just a bunch of students that a lot can go wrong with that. You just kind of gotta stop, just let it be, kind of realize that you gotta stay human <laughs> and not just get into fights and feel like, because there's only one um, grown up on the bus that you can do whatever you want because they can't get to you so quickly. Um, you, um, I'd like to uh, add to this very briefly. It's Hearing this is kind of horrifying because when I remember I was riding school buses in like kindergarten, first grade, I never heard of anything like this where it was just the bus driver having to deal with everything. We used to have um, people that helped the bus driver. They were known as matrons because usually they were women and they would be the ones in charge of keeping order on the bus. And you know, I used to be terrified of the matrons on the buses because they, they really do not suffer fools gladly. And I mean, I really feel bad for kids. Like they have to take the school bus, you know, to go to school, you know I mean? Cause you know, it's, you know, it's supposed to be easier for the parents to have the kids just go on the school bus and go. And then you go, you're on a school bus and there's, there, it's just pretty much like free reign for people to get bullied and stuff like that. It's just, it, it just boggles my mind as somebody who went through the, the yellow bus system when I was young. Okay, um, anybody else? Oh, absolutely, Jane. Um, just to pick up on what Thomasina Thomas was saying, because we have discussed this quite a bit um, within our group that we have started. We also discussed it with Senator Kaminsky as well, um, because this is a growing issue, and I think it's good to have someone like a retired police officer, because you can't just also have anybody. You need somebody who's capable of handling the situations as well. And, you know, just from firsthand, like I said, my son was having some issues with bullying and spoke to the principal and the superintendent. Long story short, I told her kind of what we were doing here in the community and this organization we're starting. And I had mentioned to her about the buses and the fact that it is an issue. And of course, as an administrator, what's the go-to answer? Oh, no, 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 we are responsible. You know, we, we take great responsibility in all this. When you know that that does not happen. And I mean, maybe again, in his school, because they're little kids, it's possible. But once you get older, you know that that's, they don't want to take responsibility. The independent bus company says there's nothing that you know that they can do if there's no witnesses, no reports, or whatever. So, school buses really need to be strongly monitored, cameras, and that's something we're really trying to move towards. Hopefully, within legislation at one point, to try to get that district-wide, island-wide, state-wide, and try to protect our kids. Okay. Andy and Steve, want to touch on this? Oh, go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. Uh, during the break, I had two conversations with Thomasina and uh, with Andy. And, and I think one thing that you have to take realization of is teachers are there for the purpose of teaching. They're not trained how to take care of kids, how to monitor a kid, how to know if somebody possibly may be in harm's way, may need help that's a problem that we're we're going through when I was little my life was really simple I went to school I played ball until I couldn't do it anymore then I came home I went to sleep and I did the same thing over and over again now there's social media there's games there's a lot of communication there's texting there's calling so I mean things get out so quickly so it is more of a specialized society and the answer to that is having people that are monitoring our kids that know what to do. And uh, Andy's um, organization, as he told me, works with a few schools. I think it's a super idea. Not necessarily good or bad on his organization because we just met, but just overall, having people that have been trained appropriately and also by having those people that are trained um, watching over, there are notations being made. So if there's an accusation, 100%, that was noted, and there's no question what went on. And that's really important as we discuss in terms of leverage. You have to be able to have leverage to get things done because then, because liability, the schools have no reason to really move, unfortunately. It's the way it is. 
you know, they don't want to get involved in liable, libelous situations for the fact it's very costly. They'd rather just go in a different direction. But by doing what you're doing, you're putting the schools in a situation where they have to act and they have to do things. And I'm saying we, we experts certainly who are trained in the behavior of kids will be able to pick out issues and problems quicker. Yeah, I, I just to reinforce what many of you have said, even if you haven't used these words, that in addition to all of the activities that you're involved with in the schools in order to protect kids that are victimized, to address bullies, to encourage upstanders, to get teachers involved and administrators. You're advocates. And so when you own that role and you begin, as you already have very well, to learn what the options are, whether it's legislation, or whether it's the use of media, or whether it's developing surveys in which you can get feedback from kids and parents as to what the experiences are on the bus or any place else, and you start to put that data together, and you start to make noise, and you don't just get silenced by speaking to one administrator or one teacher, that's when the power makes the difference. And so I can tell that you're moving in that direction, but always consider yourself, as well as being friendly helpers, to be advocates who can make a strong difference. And what you don't know, you can learn, because you have the will. And when there's a will, there's a way, okay? Just one more thing I just want to add. Just one thing to add. I think what Andy said is right on, but when you're doing what you're doing, and you want to put in your opinion, do it by fax. Have a copy of the fax that you sent to this person at that school or that person at this school or an email or something that is undeniable. That definitely, I think, will wake them up beside the phone call that, hey, I got the proof right here. You received this on said day and make sure to keep that information because you unfortunately hopefully won't need it, but it's best to have that, and certainly they're gonna, I think, take it more seriously by doing it in that way. And when all else fails, put Lena on the bus because she knows how to <laughs> wrestle them down. Absolutely. All right, it's getting